We're rolling, Miss Stewart. Right. So we just talked about vertical asymptotes, so let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. You know, it kind of bothers me a little bit that the same word is used, asymptote, because with the horizontal asymptotes, we really think it's a hole in my function, dear Liza, dear Liza. It's really where the function is undefined. Not so with horizontal asymptotes. Mm. Horizontal asymptotes are like vertical asymptotes in that the function is getting closer and closer and closer to it. But really, it is not where the function is undefined. It really is just indicating end behavior. This is really just a new word for, or two words, for end behavior. Okay? It just sounds fancier talking about a horizontal asymptote. Does sound fancy. Would you agree? Yeah. With that? <laughs> So horizontal asymptotes don't tell us anything about what's happening to the function around all the juicy bits. They really tell us what's happening as my x is getting really, really big, approaching infinity, as my x is approaching negative infinity. So you just ignore all that stuff in the middle? Is that right? Well, we'll come back and talk about yeah. the middle stuff later. But for now, horizontal asymptotes, yeah. All right. We're just going to be looking to see what happens when I'm plugging in a super big x or a super, super small x, like really, really negative, really, really positive. Now, if you remember when we talked about end behavior, we always looked at the controlling terms, because those are the powerful guys. Mr. Haas, let's look at f of x here. In the numerator, who would you say is the controlling term? Well, it's got to be that 2x cubed yeah, term, for exactly, sure. Exactly. I mean, if I'm plugging in a million or a billion, that little 5x squared minus 1 is not kind of affected at all. It's like a little flea on an elephant. In the denominator, I think we would both agree that, that x to the cube is the controlling term. So really, for our purposes here, finding end behavior, I just need to analyze those controlling terms and see what's happening when I'm dividing something pretty close to 2x cubed by x to the third. Well, what happens when I'm dividing 2x cubed by x to the third? Well, you just end up with a 2 there. I'm ending up with a 2, right? Now, it's not going to be equal to 2, but I could say that my y is approaching 2 as my x is approaching infinity. Does that kind of make sense? That makes sense. Like if I put in like a million, I'd have 2 times a million cubed over a million cubed. Well, a million cubed over a million cubed is just 1, really. I mean, I can yeah. really divide that out, and I'm just left with 2. Exactly that works. right. Sure. So if we were to graph this, and again, I'm not going to talk about graphing the whole thing. We'll get to that later. But I know, I don't know what's happening in the middle, but I know as my x's get big and as my x's get really small that they're going to approach that horizontal line of y equals 2. They're going to swoop in from somewhere. You are either swooping in from below or swooping in from above and approaching that horizontal line y equals 2 end behavior. Now that's just the end. So like in the middle, the function could even cross it, can't it? It could kind of go like up and down and cross it a few times. Absolutely. But when you when you kind of go off the page to the right and off the page to the left, you are going to approach two. That's absolutely correct. Oh, you can and, you, and often do cross a horizontal function. You didn't put uh, an x goes to negative infinity, but that's also going to be two, isn't it? Thank you so much. Absolutely. Good thing you're here, Mr. Haas. And behavior, of course, has to do with negative infinity, too. So let's think about that. If I plug in a negative a billion and cube it, multiply by 2. Divided by negative a billion cubed, well, sure. Heck, negative a billion cubed divided by negative a billion cubed, that's going to approach 2 as well. Now, I mean, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, a billion cubed, a million cubed. But really, for the functions that we're sketching, I mean, you really, I mean, you could put in like a 5 or something like that and already see that the controlling term is growing bigger than anything else. Exactly. Really. Right. So you are approaching that horizontal asymptote. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Very good. Good. All right. Shall we move on to g of x? Absolutely. Good. Okay. So controlling term in the numerator? X. Got to be x. That little plus 1 isn't going to affect anything when I'm plugging in sizable x's. Controlling term in the denominator? X cubed. X cubed. So again, I'm going to zero in on these and say, what is happening? What y values am I approaching when I'm plugging in pretty big x's or really, really negative x? That really, really negative x's. All right, well, if I'm dividing an x by an x cubed, you can, if you want, I don't know if you go this route, Mr. Haas, but it's kind of like a 1 over x squared, if you want to think sure. about it like that. If I'm plugging in a big x, let's think about this. 
one over a million, one over a billion. One over a million. If I'm plugging in, you know, something and I get one over a million, what? If I plug that into my calculator, what would I get? That's point zero 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 one. I don't know if that's enough zeros, but that's that's not a lot. And I think you're missing a zero I actually am missing a zero. under the under the first one. A million oh. has six zeros, but that's all right. Oh, we get the you're idea. Crying out loud. Thank you very anyway, much. Anyway, one one that. millionth is not a very big number. Yeah, look, that's pretty darn close to zero. To zero. Sure. So if I'm getting this right, if I'm plugging in a big number, my y value is getting pretty close to zero. It is. So can I say that my end behavior, as x approaches infinity, my y is really getting close to zero? It is, absolutely. Now, is that going to happen when I'm plugging in a negative number? Sure. Sure, why not? I'm still getting 1 divided by something humongous. Whenever you divide 1 by something humongous, is that a math term, Mr. Hodge? Absolutely. You're so get something let me get this straight. Zero. You look at the controlling terms. Yeah. I see that the bottom guy has a bigger power than the top guy, Yeah. right? So I can just say, hey, the bottom is growing faster than the top. And I know if you have a fraction and the bottom is way bigger than the top, you're approaching a teeny tiny number. You're That's approaching zero. Absolutely correct. All right. Yeah, the bottom is growing a heck of a lot faster than the top. Okay. Small number divided by a big number is zero. So I, again, I don't know exactly what this graph is going to look like, but I know its end behavior is going to be approaching the x-axis. Should Terrific. we continue? Sure. All right. One last function, h of x. We can do the same thing, analyzing the controlling terms. I think that part isn't too bad. So what's growing faster here, the numerator or the denominator? Well, I think I'm going to go with the numerator on this I one. I think so, too. X squared, that's getting a bigger, a lot faster than just this little x. So it's kind of the flip-flop of this. What happens when you divide something huge or big by something smaller? Well, I think you're going to get something big. big. Right? Yeah. And as your x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, your output is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm feeling infinity. How about you? That sounds like infinity. So here, the bigger the x I plug in, the bigger my y that I get out. Let's see what's happening as I approach negative infinity. Well, let's see. If I plug in something like negative 100 or negative 1,000 or negative a billion, I'm going to get something positive and pretty, pretty huge, divided by a negative number. So I think that I'm going to be approaching negative infinity. I think I got it, Ms. Stewart. Fantastic. So can I see it? So the first case, yeah. they both had this, you had some coefficients there, but you, the controlling terms were both something cubed. So really, you just paid attention to the coefficients. Hey, you ended up with a 2. Yeah, they're growing at the same rate. In the second case, the denominator had a bigger exponent than the numerator. Yeah. So you're going to 0. The bottom is growing bigger. In the third case, the top has a bigger exponent. It's something squared as opposed to something linear. So you're going to infinity or negative infinity. You just kind of have to check out the signs. Fantastic. And we're going to learn how to do these. These are called slant asymptotes. We're going to talk about those a little later. Fabulous. Thanks, Ms. Stewart. Thanks, Mr. Haas.